Hello. Today I will be discussing my poster, mono, and the more serious autoimmune diseases it may cause. Immunology is a very complex and confusing field of science, but it's very crucial to understand, especially given the global state over the last year. I completed this independent research by critically analyzing multiple pieces of scientific literature to discover the hypothesized mechanisms behind the relationship between the Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, and multiple sclerosis, MS. This is an important relationship because it is estimated that 90% of the healthy population is infected with EBV. The Epstein-Barr virus is a member of the herpes family and the infection is typically asymptomatic, although sometimes it does cause infectious mononucleosis or mono. The exact mechanism of how EBV works has yet to be defined. However, we do know B cells, immune cells, to be the main target. The viral infection begins at exposure when EBV enters the oral cavity through saliva and travels to the closest lymphatic tissue, the tonsils. There, it attacks B cells. The incubation period is two to six weeks, and during this time, EBV will travel to the lymph nodes and the spleen, where it will further the infection by promoting CD8 cytotoxic T cells. These are immune cells that are vital mediators of adaptive immunity, and they have the ability to inhibit certain immune responses. B cells will activate and start producing EBV-specific antibodies, as well as immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin G. It is also known that EBV can lay latent in the DNA of memory B cells, allowing that to reactivate in the future infection. There are clear signs of association between EBV, MS, and SLE, but it is first important to understand autoimmune diseases. An autoimmune disease is when the immune system attacks its own tissues and organs. This is true in both SLE and MS. Both diseases have a difficult diagnosis because their symptoms are similar to those of other diseases, and they also do not have definitive testing to prove the presence of either disease. No two cases are identical and neither disease has a cure. And the treatment for both diseases involves speeding the recovery from attack, slowing the disease, and maintenance of symptoms. In SLE, one of the most distinctive symptoms is a butterfly-shaped rash on the face, although this is not observed in every case. The immune system attacks itself, causing inflammation in areas like the kidneys, which can lead to tissue damage or organ failure and is the leading cause of death in SLE patients. MS functions very similarly with a more severe response. The nervous system functions by sending signals through neurons to other destinations of the body. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and the spinal cord and the neurons are coated in a myelin sheet. This aids in the conduction of the signal. In MS, the immune system attacks the myelin sheath surrounding the neurons and causing poor connection and eventually loss of communication altogether. MS patients often experience loss of the ability to walk independently, if at all, muscle stiffness, um, which can lead to even paralysis, bladder, bowel, and sexual problems, and eventually mental changes. As I stated before, there is an obvious association demonstrated between SLE, MS, and EBV. 
There has been an elevated number of PBV antibodies found in and around the diseased organs of MS and SLE patients. CD8 cytotoxic T cells were found unable to control the production of immunoglobulins from EBV infected B cells in both diseases. The proposed mechanisms were derived from studies done in vitro or in vivo via mice models. It was hypothesized that the EBV infection involves both TLR dependent and TLR independent mechanisms. It was also proposed that the EBV infection and reactivation could trigger the inflammation in these tissues and organs, or that the pro-inflammatory pro environment of the autoimmune disease may affect the regulation of EBV latency. Another proposal was concerning the alleles DRB11501 and DRB50101 and their involvement in the molecular mimicry between EBV and the myelin basic protein in MS. The raised teeters of antibodies against EBV among MS and SLE patients were hypothesized to be caused by memory B cells. And the most popular proposal is that of EBV vaccination to prevent hematological malignancies in the future. Immunology remains a vast field of unknown, but by further testing and future discoveries, we can better understand these mechanisms. It was noted that EBV does not infect animal cells typically used for models concerning autoimmune diseases. Another battle is the aspect of controls, which are considered unethical in human experiments, but harm the quality of the data collected. Most published works concerning the topic is conflicting, which further emphasizes the need for more tests in this area. Understanding this relationship could lead to cures and better treatment options not only for MS and SLE, but also other autoimmune diseases as well. Thank you for listening.